Well, g'day and welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. Bevo here with you at the Alma today, and we're joined by a superstar, Brownlow medalist in 2003, eight uh, All Australians, three showdown medals, Hall of Famer for Australian football, he's done it all, and of course, a 1998 Premiership player with Adelaide Crows. That is Mark Rue Rashido. Rue, great <laughs> to have you on Tuna Fat, mate. Talk us through your football journey from Wakery into becoming one of the greatest Crows of all time. Well, you forgot about my greatest accolade. That was being captain of the Italian team of the century, right? So uh, get it right when you do your research. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. Uh, I started playing footy at uh, Wakery as a kid. Uh, Dad coached the under 10, so started with that, worked the way through the grades, played in uh, the A grade up there at Wakery. And, 1991 and uh, we won a premiership up there uh, I just turned 16 when we won the flag and they hadn't won a flag for 17 years so went on the footy trip as a 16 year old and learnt a fair few things on that trip <laughs> and, uh, and how'd you end up at West Adelaide? Uh, the Riverland zone to West Adelaide so um, I had a fair few clubs trying to get me to play for them and Port Adelaide, oh, I won't say, Port Adelaide were very keen because uh, my uncle played for Port Adelaide, Bruce Lyon, he played over 200 games. Uh, people who vote for Port Adelaide or people who watch footy in the 70s and 80s did know Brucey Light. And one club actually sent me a $3,000 check when I was 12 to try and sign up. And uh, my old man ripped it up and said, don't worry, you'll get more than that later on. And I, three grand back then was like a million bucks now. <laughs> I used to work all summer holidays cutting apricots to get a thousand bucks and Melbourne ripped up a three thousand dollar cheque so I wasn't very happy with him but he was probably right in the end. Yeah, I think you made a pretty wise decision in the end uh, after your massive career. Now, um, mate, you've had some uh, very interesting coaches over the years, uh, none bigger than Blighty of course that took them to two premierships at Lake Crows and he's uh, renowned for dishing out a fair spray. Did you come a few in your time from Blighty? Yeah, you knew you were doing all right if he wasn't talking to you, all right? So, uh, which is not what younger players want these days. They like to be told how good they are and everything's okay and they don't like getting any bad feedback. So if Blighty wasn't talking to you, you knew you were playing pretty good footy. But uh, oh, one particular day, Blighty uh, had us in the, in the pre-game area and he had everyone in a circle and he was up in the middle on a ladder. I don't know why he was on a ladder, but he maybe just wanted to be higher than all of us. And one by one he stepped us forward uh, and just gave us all the almighty spray. I think there was only a couple of people that didn't get one. I think that one was Benny Hardy, he was having a good season. He said, you can go and get another contract, but everyone else copped an absolute hiding. I remember he said to Mark Bickley, who was captain at the time, he said, go and buy Michael Tuck's book, it's called How to Play Within Your Limitations. Um, yep. So uh, I don't think Bick's like that one too much, but uh, yeah, all and sundry got a spray. And let's talk about 1998. You missed the 97 one through injury, but 1998, the second one in the row for the Crows, must have been pretty special for you, Ruth. It was. I thought I'd missed my dream to play in a premiership the year before. Uh, my groin started giving way about halfway through the season, and uh, I ended up missing the second last game of the year. Tried to rest up for the finals. Couldn't get off the ground one day. I was in tears and um, said I'm going to have to go and get an operation. So. Had the operation, uh, two, groin, uh, two hernias, two conjoint tenders, osteitis pubis, and then I got wheelchaired out of hospital on a uh, prelim final day. And um, that was when they come from 39 points down to, to win that against the Bulldogs. And then, yeah, 1997 when I didn't play, it was, yeah, probably the, I was crying one minute in the crowd and happy the next. Uh, but you don't feel part of it when you don't play at all, no, no matter what they say, no matter if you've had a big impact on getting them there. Um, yeah, if you're not out there, you're not part of it. So 98 come around, I had to do a lot of rehabilitation over the summer, got right. We were struggling early, we had to win the last game of the year just to make the finals in 1998. We went to Perth and we thought we had to beat West Coast Seagulls just to make the finals. And I can't remember who was playing in Melbourne, but someone played and whatever the result was meant that we were in. So I remember all the boys all of a sudden come out of all their hotel rooms, they were jumping up and down in the in the hallway, a couple of blokes were nude, they were all wrapped, they were getting a bit too excited. Anyway, then we went and played West Coast Eagles and smashed them. Uh, and then we come back to uh, Adelaide, played in Melbourne the next week, got beaten, and then we went to Sydney to play. We, we beat Sydney in the wet up there, then we went back to Melbourne to play against the Bulldogs, beat them. And then we had to go back to Melbourne for the grand final. So we travelled five weeks in a row. And I, don't, I can't remember if anyone's done that. Um, I doubt whether they have. 
um, but we travelled for five weeks in a row and still won that grand final. It was an unbelievable uh, feeling. Uh, Blighty flogged us on the training track after we lost that game to Melbourne in the uh, first week of the finals and we thought we were going to uh, you know, be exhausted by the granny but we ran all over the top of North Melbourne and kicked six goals 15 in the first half. We kicked 4-4 uh, four, four, I think. So. Wayne Carey always said he won three premierships, two for North Melbourne and one for Adelaide because he kicked one goal five that day. Peter Caven reckons he played a great game, uh, stopping him to one, but he should have kicked five or six to Duck. Um, so he always, always thanked Duck for giving us that, that premiership. But yeah, to win a premiership is what you play for and what you strive for, and I was very happy to win one. Yeah, absolutely. I've won as well. Uh, in amateur league footy, it's unbelievable. No matter so where you win them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now let's um, let's talk about um, what you do at the moment. You're on with Dits every every morning from six to nine a.m. and you're also on Fox Footy as well. And you're a triple M commentator. And you've got six kids, mate. How the heck do you do it and get up at three in the morning every day? <laughs> well, I don't get up at three. I can promise you that. I get up at about quarter to five. I get in there about quarter past five. We got sort of seventy percent of the show sorted out before we get there. Scan a few websites, have a look around, see what's going on in the papers. Uh, we've got our show organised by six. Um, Ditz is great to work with, he's an absolute professional, he's a gun at his job. He can memorise everything, he's, he, he's very intelligent uh, and um, I'm not. I have to write everything down uh, and uh, I just sneak through, I can hardly talk. I've got a croaky voice most of the show but uh, we get through and we have a bit of fun and we've been doing the afternoons and the mornings now for I don't know, a long time. I can't even remember when we started, to be honest. It must be seven or eight years. Um, yeah, he's good to work with. We have a lot of fun and, uh, yeah, lucky to get paid to do a brekkie show. Awesome. So 6 to 9, Monday to Friday, Triple M. Make sure you have a listen. It's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, let's go back and talk about your footy career again, mate. Um, we all know that footy clubs, there's a lot of practical jokes played and stuff like that, but what's the funniest practical joke you've been involved in or perhaps that you've uh, seen at your club? Practical jokes? Oh, gee. You've caught me on the hop there. I'm not, I don't get into practical jokes too much, but uh, Tex Walker's the biggest practical joker now. He's always playing tricks on on everyone, So uh, and we have him on the show every Tuesday, so perhaps you better just stick in and listen to what Tex gets up to. Ditz put his house on the market last year because uh, uh, they were having a little running joke together and trying to get back at each other, but uh, yeah, Tex, he's right into it. And the funniest teammate you played with, Ruth? Funniest teammate I've played with. Well, Andrew Jowen used to keep us entertained throughout the pre-season uh, a lot of the time. Uh, him and Stephen Rowe were sort of, uh, yeah, they're always having a chat, so they were pretty good. Uh, Mods is uh, a funny man in, in his own way, and so uh, he was always good, to fun, good fun to go out with. Because the first year I played for the Crows, he kicked 129 goals, so he was pretty spectacular on and off the field, we might just say. <laughs> I learned a few things off Mods. Um, at Joplin's, at uh, West Terrace, and a few other places around Australia. Um, but uh, who's funny now? Uh, oh, probably just leave it at that. Those guys are pretty good. Yeah, I think you've answered that pretty well. Now let's talk about this Saturday night. It's a huge game. Both sides are missing some key players. Um, we know how close the showdowns are though in recent years, Ru, and uh, as we've spoken about so many times, um, you know, off the air and on air, it's one of those games where you just never know who's going to win regardless of who's on the field. Now let's talk about um, Port. Last week they went down by 39 points to the Pies and the Crows. It was a bit of a scrappy game against the Dockers, uh, winning that one by 17. How do you see this one going? Uh, yeah, form goes out the window when it comes to showdowns and both sides have got about five or six of their best players out. Uh, I know Port have had a couple out this week and you know there's been in the press about a few out but the Crows have got some gun players out themselves so probably cancels, it, cancels out each other I think. Um, look, I think the Crows' get performance last week was a lot better than what most people think. I think three old play finals. It was a finals-like game last week. It was very tough and contested, hard to score goals. Um, I, I respect what Port have done this year. I'm surprised they've actually gone as well as they have. Um, I think it'll be tight. Uh, hopefully the Crows can pull up well from last week in a tough game. I think the Crows will win by a couple of goals. Yeah, can't Surprising wait. that, that I picked the Crows. Yeah. <laughs> We're both Port fans, but no, it's, it's going to be a ripping game. So, well, Mark Richie there, thanks so much for joining us today. And to that, thanks to the Alma Hotel and for Steve Murphy for filming. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.